Ready? Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. I can't believe how close we are getting to gardening season. It is so exciting. It's actually part of the springtime where like next week or so, we could actually be planting some things here in our brand new raised bed garden. Right, we'll also be able to plant the entire greenhouse probably within the next week or so. So it is definitely time to start getting in the mood for gardening. And today, we are actually going to be spending our entire day working out here in the garden. Now, this past fall, we showed you that we have switched over this big garden from in-ground gardening to exclusively raised bed gardening. We showed you that we put together 21 of these 17-inch tall Vajega raised bed gardens. We filled them with organic compost and let them sit over the winter. Right, each of these beds are two feet wide and eight feet long. Uh, and this is gonna give us a lot of great growing space. We were just sick of fighting the native soil here in Southern Missouri. And this area in, in particular, where we have our garden, uh, it's pretty much like gravel in the ground. It's not even rocks that you can like pick out of the ground and then work. It's really like trying to grow in gravel, which is why we decided to switch over to raised bed gardening. Now, since the last time you saw this garden, uh, we've made a pretty big change. We have installed this really wonderful fence all the way around our garden. Right. We did this because there are times, especially in the winter, when we like to let the chickens into this area so that they can have a little more space than just in their chicken moat area. It also gives the chicken moat area some time to rest and it just gives them additional space. But the problem that we were having is they also love to get in these raised beds right. and scratch around looking for bugs and everything else. And we can't really allow that, especially after we get seeds planted. Well, and in the winter when they're scratching around, they like flip our good organic compost right. all over the place. And, you know, we need to keep that inside the beds. Right. So we put this fence around. This fence is made out of horse panels. Uh, they're four by four squares, which will keep the chickens out. Now we do know that it's not going to keep things like rabbits and raccoons and all of the other things out of here. But to be honest, you guys, we don't really have much of a problem with that. I don't suspect we're going to have a big problem with rabbits anyway, switching to raised beds. And if we do, uh, we've got other ways that we take care of those other pests. So um, the other thing is because we have our, our moat area, we don't have any issues with deer in this area right. at all. If you're not familiar with what we keep referring to as the chicken moat, the chicken moat is a double fence system that we installed around this entire one acre of land right here. There's two fences, they're six feet apart and they go all the way around. And we allow our chickens to free range inside of that. It's about a six foot wide by 900 foot long chicken run is what it is. But the real reason we put that up is because deer will not jump two fences. They're afraid to try to jump. They think they'll land on the inside and then they just can't figure out how to get out. So instead they don't jump at all. And I can tell you that over the last four years, we have not had a single deer, which we have a lot of deer around here. We've not had a single deer jump into this area. And within this one acre uh, plot of land, we have our nice big garden here. We have our orchard, and then we have a section on the far side for grapes and berries. Right, so the reason that we need to spend time in the garden area today is we need to set up a watering system. And ever since we originally switched to these raised beds, we have been getting so many questions from you guys about how do we plan to water all of these raised beds. So let's head inside the garden. I've got all the parts kind of laid out that I want to go over with you, but I want to talk to you a little bit about how the system is going to work as well. So we have seven rows of these raised beds in our garden and three beds in each row. And basically each row in the garden is going to be able to be shut off and either watered or not watered independently of the other rows. So at the end of each row will be a little shut off valve 
Now we won't know until we're completely done how many rows at a time we can water. I can tell you this, we probably won't be able to water the entire garden all at once. We'll have to do it in sections. But I'm hoping we can do at least three, maybe four rows at a time. But I just don't think we're gonna have the water pressure to be able to water everything all at once. The nice thing about this type of system, though, is that even if we need to split this up, say, into like three or four sections, um, each section only needs to water for 10 or 15 minutes each time you water. When we used to have our in-ground garden, we would have drip tape irrigation, and that waters very, very slowly, and you need to run that for several hours at a time. But with the system that we're setting up today, uh, we'll only need to water each section probably for 15 minutes, maybe only 10 minutes each time we run it. We'll judge that by how much rain we've gotten that week, how hot it is outside, and a lot of other factors. Uh, and you'll need to judge for yourself when you do this, uh, how often you need to run yours as well. So before we get started actually building the system, I've got all the parts kind of laid out here. I thought I'd go over those with you quickly uh, so that as we're working, you kind of know already what we're talking about. I will put all of these items into one kind of folder in our Amazon shop so that you guys can go and look at that. Uh, all of these parts are available on Amazon or places like Grower Solutions. Some of them, depending on what part of the country you live in, might even be available at like a Lowe's or Home Depot. But again, I will put all of these items in our Amazon shop so you can see them and you'll know exactly what parts you need to purchase. All right, so let's just go down the row here and I'll show you everything that we have. I don't have these set up in any particular order. It's not like the order that we're gonna use them. I just kind of put everything here on top of this raised bed. So the first thing that we have is our mainline tubing. This is half inch mainline tubing. This is kind of a, a thicker plastic tubing. This is a 100 foot roll for today's project for our garden. We're gonna need 300 feet of this. We also have a package of zip ties. Uh, we'll use these for closing off the ends of some of the tubing. I'll show you that later. We have some landscape staples. These are the same staples that we use when we put down the woven ground cover. These will be used just to kind of help hold the tubing in place. Uh, some hammers, obviously, to put the staples in. We also have a Y adapter for our hose bib. And then uh, we have our sprinkler heads. Now these are very important. I'm gonna to talk to you a second about what these are and why they're different than some of the other ones that you can get. Now these little sprinklers are what are called pressure compensating sprinklers. You can buy some very inexpensive sprinkler heads on Amazon that look almost identical to this, but they're not. Uh, if they don't say pressure compensating, you're going to regret purchasing them. And I can tell you this from wasting a lot of money and a lot of time with the ones that are not pressure compensating. So what pressure compensating means is that there's a little valve in the top of this that uh, only allows this to come on when enough pressure has built up in the entire system that all the sprinkler heads will come on at once. What that does is it means that you can adjust the, the size or the flow out of every sprinkler head at once. If you get the kind that are not uh, pressure compensating, you literally need to go around and adjust each little sprinkler head one at a time. And every time you adjust one, it changes the pressure in all of the others. And it's kind of a nonstop game of, of trying to get it to be just right. But by using these where they all come on at the same time and the same amount of pressure, it's very easy to adjust them in your system. They are a little bit more expensive, but I can tell you I've got some in the greenhouse now that are going on several years old and they're still working flawlessly because you can take them completely apart and clean them if you need to clean them. If some dirt gets in them or something, you can take it all apart and clean it and keep using it. So these are essential to making this system work correctly. The next thing that we have is quarter inch flexible tubing. Uh, this is what will actually connect to the sprinkler head and to the main line. So we've got about 300 feet of that as well. Uh, we've got an inline filter. This was where our uh, garden hose will actually connect. And then there's a little filter in here. So if there are any, is there any debris uh, coming from our water line, uh, it will get trapped in here. Uh, before it actually makes its way into the system and can clog up our sprinkler heads or our tubing or anything else. This is a hose and adapter. This will actually screw onto here and then our main line will connect out of that. 
These are little barbs that uh, fit into this quarter inch tubing. This is how we connect the quarter inch tubing to the main line. So we've got about, I don't know, 300 of those. These are our shutoff valves. Remember I told you at the end of each row will be a shutoff valve. Uh, this is what will go at the end of each row. So if we want it to water, we leave it on. If we want that row to not water that day for some reason, we can turn that off. We have some T adapters. And then the last thing that we have are some tools for actually punching holes into our mainline tubing. I actually have two different kinds here. This is the kind that I've used for years and years. These are inexpensive. You can pick these up for just a couple dollars uh, at Amazon or even sometimes at Home Depot. So if you're only doing a system every once in a while, this is a good thing. Uh, this time I did go ahead and upgrade a little bit to one that's just kind of an automatic thing. It's like $20, so it was a good investment, I think, because these days we're doing a lot of this type of irrigation, and uh, it will save me a little bit of time. But you can definitely get away with just using the inexpensive kind as well. So that's really all of the parts that we're going to be using today. Uh, we're going to get to work. I'm going to show you step by step as we go. I'll try to be as detailed as I can, and we're going to get this entire system up and running so that we can start watering these raised beds uh, before we actually need to start planting. So the first step in this project is going to be running some of this mainline tubing. In fact, we're going to run all of the mainline tubing before we ever start hooking up any of the sprinklers at all. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the seven pieces of mainline tubing that are going to make up our seven rows in the garden. So we need to basically cut a piece of this mainline tubing that goes from the end of this bed and it's going to run on the side of the beds here on the ground all the way over to the end of that bed over there and that's where we'll have a piece that comes all the way along the entire length of the garden. So let me show you on this first one what we'll do and then I won't show you all seven of them because they're all going to be exactly the same. So again this is a hundred foot roll of this tubing and what we're going to do is the first thing we need to do is we need to close off this end because we don't want any water to go further than this end and the way that we do that they do sell things that you can buy specifically for closing these off they're called like figure eight closures and if I can find them on Amazon I'll leave a link but there's really no need to buy that all you really need to do on this tubing is kink it like this and then take a zip tie and we'll just zip tie that shut like that and then cut that end off and that's all we need to do and that will keep that no water will go past that kink. So that's the cheapest, easiest, fastest way to terminate the end of each one of these lines. And then what we'll do is we know we want these to end right at the end of the raised bed so we'll take a staple and I'm going to try to use as few staples as we can today because every place we put a staple, we're making a hole in the woven ground cover. And believe it or not, even a hole the size of the end of one of these staples is big enough for a weed to find its way through. At least here in Missouri, our weeds are terrible. So we're going to leave that there. And we're going to just take this and we're going to unwind it all the way down to the other end of this row. And then we know that we're gonna have our main piece of tubing where the garden hose connects is gonna run right at the end of the beds on this side. So I'm gonna cut this just a little bit longer than that so that we make sure we have extra. You can always cut it shorter later on, but you can't make it longer later on. So we're gonna cut that right there and then this end just stays open because in a little while we're actually going to be connecting this to the T connector on the main line. So that will make sense in a minute. But for right now, we're just going to do the same exact thing that I just did. We're going to do that seven or six more times so that we have one of these pieces running down the side of every row of raised beds.
We have all seven of our lines run along the sides of the beds. Now it's time to hook up the piece of main line tubing that our garden hose will actually connect to. This piece then, all seven of the pieces that we just laid out will connect to this piece with the T connectors that I showed you earlier in the video. We're gonna be using quite a few different pieces for this step. We're gonna be using these T connectors. We're gonna be using our shutoff valves. We're gonna be using our inline filter and the hose bib connector or the hose connector. So we're gonna actually have our system start way back here at the back of the garden. Our nearest hose bib is just about maybe 30 feet away over here. And so this will be a very good location to start our system. First two things we're gonna hook up are our inline filter and our uh, hose connector. And again, we're gonna do that back here. So the way that this is going to work is we're gonna take our hose connector, we're gonna push that on to this piece of mainline tubing. Now these connectors, this little threaded piece right here, this is a reverse thread. I hope this all makes sense to you. When you turn it, you can see that it slides. It slides up that little barb. Hopefully you can see that okay. So what we do is we start with that down like this and then we slide that on to our piece of tubing. And then we unscrew this so that it slides up over the tubing and creates a nice tight seal. Just like that. And then our inline filter will just screw onto that. And then this will just stay over here. This is right here is where our actual garden hose will screw onto the system. So I'm actually gonna set this tub up on there just a little bit, just so it holds it in place. And so I know that it hasn't moved while we're working. Apparently the geese aren't very happy with us today. They are still sitting on about 25 eggs. And you guys, I think it's gonna be probably this week sometime that those eggs hatch. So uh, that's exciting. All right, so now we need to run this piece of tubing all the way down all seven rows of our garden beds, and then we need to start connecting those pieces that we installed before so that they come off of this line. Now that we have all of our pieces of main line actually rolled out, we have the seven pieces running down the sides of the beds, and then we have the one long piece running down the end of the beds here. It's time to start connecting them all together. The way that we're gonna do that is with these T connectors. So we're gonna take our T connector. I know that this needs to go so that it'll run right down the side of this raised bed where we just put this line. So this line will connect here like this. So I'm gonna cut my piece of tubing where I know about where it needs to go. Again, this isn't an exact science, so if you're close, this stuff is, is bendy. It can, you know, it can curve a little bit. It's not gonna be the end of the world. So just get close. We're gonna slide that on. This is just like that other connector we were using before where you, you start it with the barb exposed and then you back this off to cover up your tubing and lock it in place. Then we're gonna take this other end. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side of the T-connector. And we're gonna slide that in place. So now that we have this T-connector connected to our main line, you can see right here at the side of our raised bed, we need to install our shutoff valve and then our main our piece of tubing here that will run down the sides of the bed. So I cut a little piece of tubing here. What we'll do is we'll add that to the T-connector here. And we'll tighten that on. Then we'll put our valve. And all of these connections work the same way. They're all the same type of fitting. So you just slide it on.
tighten that onto the tubing. And then this is the piece we installed earlier that runs down the side of the raised bed. So we're gonna, you can see it's a little bit long, so we're gonna cut this about where we want it. And then this will hook to the other side of our shutoff valve. Tighten that one on. And just like that, our first row is completely done. When we want this row to water, we can turn that valve on. If for some reason we don't want that row to water, if there's something in here that doesn't need as much water as everything else, we can shut that row off. So we've got six more of these to do, just like we did before. Like I said, there's gonna be a lot of repetition in this system. It's just doing the same thing over and over. We need to do all six of these rows until we get to the other end. Then we'll be to the part where we can actually start installing our little sprinklers in each bed. And after that, we're all done. All seven of those lines are hooked up. The last thing to do is just to cap this off here at the fence. We'll just do the same thing we did before. Just kink it and put a zip tie around it. And then we'll hold a, use a landscape staple to hold that in place. The next step is to actually install the little sprinkler heads in each bed. We've decided that we're gonna do three sprinklers in each of these beds. Based on how they work in the greenhouse, I think that will be good enough coverage for this entire bed. So what we need is we need three of the actual sprinkler heads. So we'll take those out. We're also going to need our tools for punching hole in our main line. I'll show you how to do both kinds. We need our barb connectors and we need our quarter inch flexible tubing. Now, depending on the height of your raised bed or how where you want your sprinklers to go is going to determine how much of this tubing you're going to need. So, the way I'm going to do it is I know that we want our sprinklers, we've decided we're going to do three sprinklers per bed and they're going to go, you know, centered in the bed. We're going to do one here one right in the middle of the bed, and then one down at that end, the same distance away as this. So we're gonna put our sprinkler head there. We're gonna take our quarter inch tubing and connect it to the sprinkler head. It just slides on. There's no kind of, you know, anything that you need to screw on or anything like that. They just slide on. We'll put that down into our bed, and then this will run straight down the side of the bed to our main line. And then we know that that is how long we need to cut this piece of the quarter inch tubing. I'm gonna leave just about an inch extra because I do like there to be a little bit of slack. Then we're gonna take one of our barb connectors. We're gonna put that on the end of our flexible tubing. And now we're ready to punch our hole and actually install this into the main line. So first I'm gonna use the new punch thing that I just bought. We're gonna go about where we want it here on the main line. That slides in. And you can see just like that, it just poked a little hole right in that main line tubing. Then our barb connector just snaps in like that. And that one is completely hooked up. It's, there's nothing hard about setting up any part of this system. It's a little time consuming, but it's gonna save you a ton of time in the summer when you don't need to be out here hand watering everything. So let's do the next one that will go here in the center of the bed. So on our beds, we have a little seam right here so I know about where that goes. And again, the reason I'm leaving a little extra room on these flexible tubes is so that if we wanna move them, we have a little bit of little bit of play there. 
but I don't want so much extra tubing that, you know, it's a trip hazard or that the plants are going to get all tangled in it and stuff like that. So we're going to put that there. We're going to measure down to our main line. We're going to move about an inch back and we're going to cut our tube. Install one of these barbs. And this time I'll use this tool to show you how to do that. So this is the kind that I've always used before. So this basically is just a punch as well. You just hold it like this and you just push it into the top of the tube. And it makes your hole there. And then that snaps in just like that. We've two done, one more to go. And this entire bed is done. All right, we've got all three uh, sprinklers installed in this bed. We've got 20 more beds to go. What we're gonna do for the rest of these, instead of them doing them one by one, we're actually gonna go, now that we know how long these tubes need to be and all of our beds are the same size, we're actually gonna go and assemble this entire thing, the sprinkler, the tube, and the barb, and then we'll come out and we'll just install them all in all of the beds. put all of the emitters in the beds. Now it's time to actually hook the system up and test it out. So we're over at our hose bib. This is a frost-free hydrant. This also supplies water over to Waddlesville where our ducks, geese, and silky chickens are. So what we need to do is we need to add this Y splitter so we can still give water over to Waddlesville, but we can also use this for water in the garden. And we'll take our new hose, and this is the hose that will run over to the garden. Now one thing that we have learned with this type of system, at least with the greenhouse, and I'm assuming the same is true all the time, is that we tried using a timer so that we could run it for a certain amount of time and it would automatically shut off. But the timer itself restricted the flow of water too much and it didn't allow us to do very much of the greenhouse at a time. So now we just turn it on and set a timer on our phone and come back and turn it off. Um, that way you get the full capacity of the hose running over to the, to the garden. And I think we're gonna do the same thing for this. We'll, we're not gonna use a timer. You know, you're only running it for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. So most of the time we have work to be doing out here during that time anyway. If you had to run it for a couple hours, it might be a big deal to not need a timer. But I think for this type of system, no timer is fine. So we're back at the back end of the garden. This is where our inline filter is, and this is where we'll hook our hose to. All right, everything is hooked up. Now, I told you at the beginning that we won't know until we get to this point how many rows we're gonna be able to water at a time. For right now, I have left all of the rows open because there could be a chance that we could run all of these sprinklers at one time it's at least worth a try. So I'm gonna go turn the hose on. We're gonna let the system fill up with water. Uh, we're gonna check for any leaks and we're gonna see what the sprinklers do when they actually come on. Ready? Here we go. All right, so I have all of the lines open. I have the hose on all the way and this is what we're getting over here. So this isn't good enough, this isn't quite strong enough. So what I'm gonna start doing is, first of all, I'm gonna walk around and make sure there's no big leaks anywhere because if there are, that could be affecting the water pressure. I don't suspect that that's the case. I think this is just too many sprinkler heads to be running at one time. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start turning off one row at a time until we get the amount of flow that we want. This should, each one should cover you know, their section of the raised bed. So let's go start turning some rows off so we can see how many rows we can do at a time. All right, so we're gonna start here with this front row. I'm gonna turn this off and we'll see then what happens to everything behind it. 
we turn that off it should make everything else get a little stronger which it did still not quite as strong as I would like though so let's turn another row off now that's getting a lot better I'm gonna turn one more row off and see what happens back here but actually the way it's going right now this is pretty darn good all right, let's turn this one off yet and see what happens. I think that is what we want. Even though now they are technically kind of going out onto the ground, the one thing you need to remember is that once we have plants in here, the plants are going to, you know, it's not going to spray as big as it does right now because the plants are going to be kind of in there and the leaves of the plants will kind of keep some of that water in. But I think this is what we want. They are definitely, I mean, you can see these beds are already soaked. And now if we really want to, what we can do is we can come through and if we don't want it to spray over quite this far, you know, we can turn a road down. And over time, we'll learn where that needs to be. It looks like about three quarters. But this is what I like about these sprinkler heads is I can adjust this one valve and it'll adjust that entire row because these are those pressure compensating sprinkler heads. So this is perfect. With these about three quarters of the way open, we can do these four rows and they're like perfect. Well, that is an awesome project done. I am so happy with the way that that turned out. I figured that it would work well because like I said, we've been using a very similar system in our greenhouse for the last three years, I think, and it's worked out really well. I thought it would work well in here, but you guys, I think it's gonna work even better than I had hoped. Now that we have this irrigation system all set up, that means that we can plant the very first things that need to go into these raised beds, and that can really happen any day now. Right. We have onions, strawberries, asparagus, and mustard to go in these beds like as soon as possible. Right. Most of these beds will be reserved for our actual summer growing, which here in Missouri, we have about another month before we can plant real summer things like tomatoes and cucumbers right. and all of those types of things. This year, we're not doing any peppers out here. Those are all going to be in the greenhouse. The majority of our tomatoes are gonna be in the greenhouse. But we do have a few special tomatoes that are gonna be out here, and we're gonna try them in a new way. So I hope you guys will stick around for that. You guys were so happy that you joined us today to hook up this sprinkler system in all of the raised bed gardens. If you're interested in knowing more about the raised beds, these are Vajega raised bed gardens. And remember that Kevin has all of the sprinkler system uh, connections and parts and stuff all together in one area in our Amazon shop. We'll also leave a link to the raised beds in the description of this video. We have gotten a 10% off coupon for you guys if you follow our link. You'll get 10% off your order of however many raised beds you order for your homestead. You guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. And remember, the best way to help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. And this would be a great one for all of you raised bed gardeners. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.